Hello, everyone. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Uh, Leon is not here yet. Um, so... Wait, okay. So people can see me, right? Hello. Hi, Nora. Hi, Julie. Um, so, Laura, uh, Leon is on his way. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Uh, he gave me some instructions on how to start this up. Um, so, uh... He's going to be calling, and I'm going to buzz him up as soon as he gets here, but uh, he gave me the go-ahead to get started. Um, but that being said, I have no idea what I'm doing. So maybe we should just uh, still hang out for a little bit until he gets here. Uh, who's here right now? I see Julie. I see Nora. Who else? Bru uh, streamer 141799 is Bruce. Very cool. Hi, Bruce. Great job, by the way. I guess you guys saw episode 6 today. Uh, which, uh, which had some great stuff by Bruce in it and a lot of other people. Um... Yeah, I was uh, I was I was really really glad that you guys uh, got to watch uh, part two because I I was really really proud of uh, both of those uh, both of those episodes, um, but it didn't feel it, it, it they they fit together really really well. So just releasing episode five, it didn't feel uh, it didn't feel as uh, complete until you guys got to see this. Uh, thank you, Nora. Um, it's I, I never really talked about it much with Leon um, doing this chat, but uh, it's uh, it, it was something that I thought about. But it, it, I didn't, I, you know, like the actors should have their glory and all of that stuff. I'm the behind the scenes guy. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, we can go ahead and start, you know, if you guys have any questions, I'll, uh, I'll start fielding them. I saw an early one, uh, from, it looks like it was Bruce. What was the worst challenge Arvin has had with behind the scenes problems? Um, there isn't, I mean, I think Bruce can probably attest to this, but, uh, and Leon hopefully when he gets here, but I really like to run a stress-free set. Um, I like getting people in on time and out on time, um, especially on a project like this. Everybody is working for very cheap or free or, I mean, you know, and just putting way more into it. And, and we really, really appreciate that. So I never, ever want to waste anybody's time and resources. So I, um, and that, again, I try to make everybody as comfortable as possible. Um, that being said, I think it's, um, uh, because we're calling in so many favors, it's always tough to schedule people and make sure that everybody can be at the right place at the right time, uh, especially this time around when we're doing 10 episodes. Um, <laughs> Leon just texted me, uh, that he's, uh, downstairs. Hold on a second. Let me, let me text him so that he can buzz, so I can buzz him up. Um, so, uh, scheduling everybody and all of the locations, which again, were, you know, we had to do stuff guerrilla style and, uh, and, and call in favors for locations. So everything had to fit together really, really tightly for 10 shooting days for 10 episodes. And I don't know if people understand it, but when we shot all 10 episodes, we shot them completely out of order. Um, and, uh, you know, we had, uh, <laughs> oh, no, now, now I, uh, now I missed a call from Leon. Give me a second, guys. Um, and this time around, we had four directors, um, since I took more of a, oh, here comes Leon. All right, I'm buzzing you up. Did the door open? Is it opening?
Okay, I think that worked. We'll see. Otherwise, I might have to run down and get uh, and have to get Leon. Um, uh, how? Um, so yeah, uh, for for directors, I became more of a an executive producer this time around. But obviously, I wanted to direct a few of them because I am a director at heart. Um, so uh, scheduling a lot of talent. Uh, you know, around this is a uh, was was pretty tough. Here comes Leon. Say hi, sir. Hey, tell them how I'm never ever late on set. Ever, ever, ever. Leon is never ever late on set. Ever, ever. He says. And Arvin, here he is. Arvin's a very good liar. Here, let me let me. All right, you sit down. Cool. You you do this next to me because I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Hey guys. So the questions appear there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll switch it on this side. All right, give us a second, guys. Sorry I'm late, guys. Uh, no, it was, it was my fault. I told you that. I made you come across the thing, and then I got here earlier than you. Well, no, it's had that the uh, stoplight was out of Fairfax. So was... Okay, so while Leon is uh, settling down, let me, uh, let me find another question here. Um, what did I edit that Tom Beards was most embarrassed about? I don't know what that is. I th I thought it was his scene in episode two where he's on no, the I mean, in front of. Like, okay, so um, uh, let let me let me that would be my ask answer, about this question. So Quality Hill asks. So, so somebody said something that Tom Beards was embarrassed about something from episode six, right? From the latest episode. Is that what he said? I, he never told me which episode, I just assumed it was that one, but then um, Quality Hill said that Tom had said it was cut from this episode, so I can't imagine what was embarrassing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't... Uh, um, I have to assume that it's from episode 5 and 6, um, based on what people were saying, but I, don't, I can't imagine anything in episode 6 that he would be mm. embarrassed about. I love his scene in episode 6, I think it's really sweet. Yeah, he's... Um, he he did some like funny kind of like improv y things. Mm -hmm. that, you remember when we shot when we were walking away, he was like, Come yeah, back, baby, yeah. come back. You know, when, when Muscles was being dragged away <laughs> by uh Nathan and Ross, uh and one of the takes, uh Tom did a thing where he was yeah, like yelling and like, Muscles come back or baby come back. Something Tom like likes that. to improv, but it actually kinda of worry. I'm always on set thinking, Oh my god, but then I see it in a and it works. Yeah, so uh, we ended up not using that just because it was something that was kind of spur of the moment. And uh, but I, I don't think you. I can't imagine that he was embarrassed by that. It was all. Know. It was all good stuff. I just assumed from the nature of it that it was that first um, bottoming scene, shall we say? I get embarrassed using that, that terminology if you are. Um, if it is from a different episode, then. Then it's not me. <laughs> I, I had nothing to do. I didn't direct those other episodes. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'd love to know what, what that was. Are people, are people still on it? Like, uh, yeah. Um, I don't I know like how that, long this was. I like that question. What was the question? What's the worst challenge? Oh, yeah, I, I, I answered seen. that already. Because oh. you came in late. Actors who show up late would probably be the answer to the... Can, um, it's like a... Oh, there we go. Is there one particular actor that you work easily with? Nudge, nudge. Hmm. I'll leave the room. If you can, <laughs> honestly, um, Leon, Leon, and I have a good. I, Leon is one of my favorite people to work with in general because I think we have we have a good shorthand at this yeah, we point, do, and actually. we're we're both really honest about each other. But obviously, we see eye to eye on ninety nine percent of the show. I think we have similar sense of humor. Yeah, I tend to be more kind of like the actor. Me like wants to like linger longer on stuff, but Arvin's always like, no, 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 move, 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 and then he'll show me the cut, the quicker cut, and he's like 99.9% .9 right, so yeah. I'm learning to just go with it. It's, uh, you know, I'm, one of the things that I believe in is that you, if you sign on to the project, you believe in the project, you believe in what, you know, like the, the content of the project, which in this case was the script, and I love the script. Um, it might not be immediately the type of thing that I would write or direct yeah. myself, but... No starships. No, no special effects, you know. Well, yes, there are special effects, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, 
<laughs> but you know, I'm if I'm in for it, it's because I admire the writing and I admire the talent in it. So, uh, and I, I feel like other people should be that way. Um, so as long as we're all we all kind of just love the material, then it, it turns out really really well. I gotta say, I mean, I will I'll I'll make a I'll make a you know a special shout out to Bruce who is the, Bruce's what was it you streamer? He's very easy to work with. Yeah, Bruce is, Bruce is just fantastic, and he he always brings his A game. Answers his own questions before he even shows up, which I love. It's yeah. Great. Um, so it's, it's just uh, super, super fun. And I, you know, like it's, it, uh, having a character that's an antagonist like that mm -hmm. in a story like this, I think really added oh, God, a lot yeah. more texture. Can you believe you know? he wasn't in the original script? It wasn't until Bruce emailed us after the pilot. I knew that there was going to be like a, you know, a frenemy further down the road, but he, um, he emailed us right after the pilot. I'm yeah, like, I mean, it just, it just motivates so much more of the story. And remember time. originally the wedding was just going to be like a fifth old dog who would sort of dropped out of sight, and then it's like... I don't even remember that. <laughs> no, I remember because I changed it to Nelson, and I remember uh -huh. one of the few times that you praised me was like, oh, that's brilliant, change it to Nelson, that's perfect. You know, one of the things that you should do, like if you were going to do more of that like auction stuff, is you should mm -hmm. have like those scripts. Oh, I do. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Jason <laughs> is glad you mentioned that. We're actually, if you don't know, we're um, auctioning props from season one and season two on eBay. All you have to do is go to eBay, do the advanced search, and search old dogs um, underscore new tricks with no spaces. Uh, we've got lots of wedding stuff up there now, and um, I'm going to do my shooting script. Yeah, well, but like I think it's... Or I mean individual scripts. No, I mean even even like the early early scripts. I feel like there's something really. I mean, is cool. that too? You know, no, is that I, weird? Please. There's because uh, you know like the, the a lot of the content is there. Yeah. And my oh, God, you mean there's like still the so early much. Drafts? You, is that what you mean? Like the kind of like you know like back when like the episodes. So one of the things that I don't know if people uh, <laughs> knew, but the original. Uh, the original scripts for this had each episode be twice as long, yeah. and uh, they were like 15-page scripts, and in script <laughs> format, one page is one minute, so they would have been 15-minute episodes, which I think is really, really, like, it, it would have been, like, the, the stories were really, really good, but I felt like uh, we should split them in half and just you know, so then we can get twice as many episodes. Um, so now it's it's curious to me to look yeah. at how those old episodes worked out when they were... Oh, before they were split in half. Yeah, before they were split in half. It's funny, I think actually this part of the wedding, the second half is probably the best second half we've had of an episode, you know what I mean? Because even the ones that aren't to be continued mm -hmm. are pretty much part one and part two. Right, yeah, so you could imagine that, you know, the, this season so far has been like one and two were originally one episode, which makes sense, mm -hmm. and then three... Well, no, actually, one was going to be like a prelude, a short prelude, and then the first real episode was going to be episode two and three, the, the entire birthday party. Oh, it's coming yeah. Back to you. I know, yeah, <laughs> see, I'm, I, I, but again, I think they really evolved still even past that, so I... But he actually was a large part of the... Uh, the evolution. Um, I remember you telling me, because originally Bobby was just called Bobby Bottom or something, and, and Damien yeah. was just referred to as Boy Toy the whole time. <laughs> and, and Arvin wisely said, you know, you're going to have trouble getting good actors to play parts that are just called Boy Toy or Bottom Boy. Well, or, also, they were all true. bees. <laughs> they, well, they all started with bees. I love my alliteration. No, I, I have this weird thing when I'm writing, I, uh, J's, I end up, like a lot, really? of, a lot of characters end up being J's. Hmm. J's are like, like Daryl's and up like... I like like B's and K's. Those yeah, blindfold funny. guy. Look, they were all B's. All, all of his, all of his nondescript other characters were all B's. That's true. Yeah, that's, that, there's, there's something, there's something there. Um, did I, uh, let me, let me... Oh, look my up. sunglasses are prescription, so we will not be auctioning the sunglasses. <laughs> Although I should have just bought a cheap pair at Walgreens, said these are the sunglasses, and auctioned them off. Damn it. But yeah, well, I think we'll do the shoot. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Those earlier scripts. As a filmmaker, reading scripts and seeing how things changed from the very I beginning love that. to I the very end that. is always really interesting. 
and even just in the editing stage, I love like you know reading about how films change or what scenes get dropped or or you know yeah. Like, have you ever seen Twenty One Grams with Naomi Watts? No. Or, it's like one of those films where it's like there's uh -huh. no chrono, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. And I, I, I would love to like get a copy of that and like have two weeks on a desert island and cut it in chronological order and see how it plays. Uh -huh. It's a great movie the way it is now. It's like part of me always wonders. Did they do that just because it didn't stand up going straight through? You know, because it's it's kind of gimmicky. Yeah. By the way, can you guys hear us? Okay, I don't. I'm using like an external mic, and I have no idea if it's loud enough. Anybody? Maybe they can't hear us. Yes. Okay. Just, just fine. <laughs> the last time I did a chat, it was like. <laughs> yeah. Your yeah, we got we got this cute little mic here now so actually this would be a good opportunity bad. for me to just go down the list and give you credit for all the jokes and stuff that you did add okay you... people think that i brilliantly the last vomit in the car was him the script originally ended with uh oh my family oh, and we drive off into the sunset and arvin's like Yin. yeah so i i always have a uh, no ty is not in the background this is this is not this is a poor uh, <laughs> substitute for ty um but um, yes. Uh, what the hell? Are you? Oh yeah, the the vomit. I, I, I the show is a comedy. The show I forget that sometimes. The show deals with dramatic, you know, issues and themes, but it's at heart a comedy. Mm -hmm. And I think I mean that's what I like about it. I'm primarily a comedic director, and mm -hmm. it's it's you know it always helps the medicine go down. And honestly. For a web series, comedies will always do better. Oh, God, yeah. I don't know, why, know. how people pull off dramas. Cause, who watches them? Yeah. I mean, I know somebody does. I yeah. watch them sometimes. So, uh, so, as a result, you know, when I'm reading through the script, and again, I really, really love the script, but every now and then, one of, <laughs> one of, the, thing, one of the things that I, one of my jobs on the thing, on the show, is to kind of make sure that the show protect me from myself keeps keep you know it, it keeps up the funny which mm -hmm, i think is mm -hmm. really really important which and, you're very good at yeah you know like we, we we should end on a joke and try to make sure that every every scene no matter how heavy it is has something funny. yeah a joke in there somewhere you know now i'm forgetting all the ones that you've added so much and now like i used to be able to just rattle them off oh that was Arvin. that was our no no Arvin had that idea in um in the wedding thing i added the lawyer line Yes. Did you hear me laugh when you guys were running that scene? Yeah, I shooting? did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, the, the uh, what is it, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends and lawyers. And lawyers. I added the and lawyers. Thing. Which I love because I've worked with lawyers for so long. Anytime you can get a little dig into a lawyer. It's... Well, I was, I was working with Stephanie and I, you know, I could tell that she want, you know, like she, she was having fun with, you know, kind of doing, exploring stuff like mm -hmm. that. So we were, and, and she had... She's yeah, she has a she has a really really funny character. So Such let's let's explore that a little bit, and then um, I, I I kind of purposely left you not knowing that we were going to do that. <laughs> it's a good uh, thing I saw it during the rehearsal. I would have run the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that was so much fun to shoot, Arvin. That it, it's so funny when I was even just the initial writing of the wedding episodes. I really thought this is going to be. This is going to be the train wreck. This is going to be the thing where anything and everything will go wrong. It was probably the smoothest shoot. Eh, it wasn't the smoothest. No, well, give it the well. Yeah, what we attempted and how it turned out. I I am very very proud of how that turned out. I'm very proud of it. Um, because yeah, I mean, it was you know, it was such a huge step up in scale. Oh, okay. You're talking to them. Oh, uh, here, I'll lean in closer. So yeah, I don't, I don't know, know if, I, if I can get used to this. That takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> Leon and that one. Yeah. Um, I don't have to be in it. This is about you, though. Nah, I've, I've been in plenty of But it. I don't feel comfortable doing it. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, it, it turned out really, really well. I, you know... Uh, at some at the, at the beginning of episode of, of season two, we weren't sure whether or not um, uh, I would be able to commit to directing all of them, 
<laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, and then Leon summer. just kept guilting me, and honestly, I, I couldn't. <laughs> and giving you more guest stars. Guest yeah, stars. but I mean, and really, I, I couldn't really stay away, oh, you know. I, I, you I cared about it too much for me to be able to walk away from that. But at the very least, I, I had to do the wedding episode. I think, it looked, you know, I think if we released the two of them together as a short film, we'd get in a lot of festivals. I mean, I really... If you guys haven't watched it, like part one and part two, like one after the other, I'm tempted to do a playlist just with those two episodes to encourage that because it really, it really. They're meant. They're meant. Well, uh, they they are meant to be watched back to back. But I was watching it recently. Like I was like, I wonder if you could just take out the credits and just put mm -hmm. you know one after the other. But we do end on a gag That's again, true. so it feels like it's two ads. And an and unintentional cliffhanger. Actually, Julie asked me what? when we did a chat after the last episode. Um, if I wanted people to think that because Brad started to say something that maybe something was going to happen where the wedding wouldn't go through. Yeah. Didn't even occur to me and I love a cliffhanger. I should have, I had my hands full just keeping the groom a secret. There's, I mean, there was, you gotta, you gotta just play the entire thing. You could have made a feature film out of that day and, you know, mm. it would have been really interesting. But. That was so much fun though. I mean, it just felt so, it's real equipment, you know. And then, it's, like, the next week, so I'm like, Newsroom, where someone shows up at Sportsman's Lodge, but like the oh, five semis, and I was like, "Oh, that's <laughs> okay. That's how it really." That's funny. I want it now. I want to see what they what theirs look they like. They did a neon sign, River Rock Lounge, and put it over huh. the door, and they they've been and it was for the newsroom. Yeah, huh. they had right. a big, one of the big uh, ballrooms. They had a big Romney sign. I was forbidden from going in there because I thought I'd like torch it or something. <laughs> which um, Julie is asking for doing for ten more years. Oh. Of ten more seasons. I don't even know if I can get him back for a third one. I'm already like, please make this these episodes a hit so we can it's, get him back. I, 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 I think as people can see, I have a really high uh, standard for all of these episodes, you know. And um, so if I hire some hack, you'll be like, you're fine, no, Leon, I'll take over. I'll uh, <laughs> no, that that screws me over so bad. <laughs> So you, you, you've established this brand that we have to right. maintain. You've like set the bar incredibly, ridiculously yeah, yeah. high. That being said, I think, you know, like the other directors really, really uh, oh, God, went yeah. to bat for us here. And, and that was something that originally when we talked about the concept of this show, I wasn't supposed to be directing all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe even any of them. I don't know. I don't, you know, like... It just kind of evolved. I don't remember. Yeah, we were point. just having a conversation about it. Um, but I could not imagine that I would be doing, that I would actually be directing all of them. Um, and, and season one was better. It was more manageable with five episodes. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. episode 10 was just a marathon. Of course, I say that, but all, of the, all the actors <laughs> the entire time. So I have nothing but respect for you guys. I, well, the nice thing about like an ensemble thing is we're not always there all the time every day. Well, some of us aren't anyway. Uh, yeah. It wasn't. I'm finding this part the 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 posting and the promotion is is harder work than because yeah. I wasn't working the crew. It's easy for me to say. Oh, <laughs> it's so such. A yeah, crew. think Kiko. Think about think of Kiko. He was there the entire time. Look at all the crap Kiko he was and doing. Ta well, I always as an actor, <laughs> like I get really bitchy with other actors who's like, "Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I've worked so hard." Because like, kind of, you weren't there an hour before. Yeah, You're I talk. Not I talk about how I can't after. do all ten episodes and then. Yeah. Yeah, they were, they were well, you there. know, it's like childbirth. I was a Lamaze partner for a friend of mine years and years and years ago. And I, ever since then, I was like, why would any sane woman have a second child? After uh -huh. going through that pain and uh -huh. all that crap, why would anyone? But this is exactly the same thing. You know, you're, it's, the payoff is so fabulous that you forget about the pain and the sweat and the blood and the piss and the shit. And the, I, don't, I don't remember that. And I don't, I don't just know. That, doesn't, that doesn't sound like I want to be reminded. If you have that. kids, you'll... Um, Nora asks, how long have I been directing as a whole? Um, do people understand how we met? I've told that story so many times, surely they do. So, um, uh, I picked him up at a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard enough. I know. I, that's true. Um, <laughs> so, uh... He was fucking my sister. And her two girlfriends. And Who's I your sister? Him. Oh, actually, no. No. All right. No. <laughs> no, no. Um, okay, so uh, how, how long? It was, that, was, that was a while ago. Now. Like, 
eight, eight seven years. Or eight years. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, in 2005, however, uh, in, uh, late summer of 2005, I, um, for the fall, uh, my final fall semester of film school. It says it's your grad thesis on my resume. So long oh, long well. <laughs> it was as good as any grad thesis I've ever seen. That, that, that credit can't possibly get you anything. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we may, um. Uh, my Hollywood spin. So for my senior thesis film, I would, um, I, uh, uh, I made a film called Deer Season, which was written by Derek Stricker, mm -hmm. who was, what does that sound? Oh, they're showing a commercial. Is there a commercial right now? Yeah, but then when it ends, the chat starts where it left off. But can they hear us? When they, they, well, they don't all get the commercial at the same time, oh. so they might be hearing it. Okay, all right, some people say that. Okay, okay, fine. Sorry about that. Again, I have no idea what's going on here. He's a virgin. Yeah. Be um, so, um, so it, uh, Deer Season was written by Derek Stricker, who is a very uh, old friend of mine, and we went to film school together. Very um, old. He's almost 30. <laughs> and, uh, and he is what he edited all of... Season, he is the editor of all of season one of Old Dogs and directed episodes nine and ten, which mm. you will be seeing. Mm. Um, and, and they're fantastic, and he'll be editing those episodes as well. Um, so we made that movie, and, um, and it was being produced by a really another friend of ours called uh, named Ryan. And uh, Ryan had made a film the year before that starred Leon. Divorce American Style. Called Divorce American Style. Not to be confused with the Dick Van Dyke, um, Debbie Reynolds thing. Yes, uh, uh, Different Catherine, movie. yes, that's what, that's what that poster was. Um, so, um, so we made that, so, uh, when we were, uh, casting, oh, and you can find the movie online, you can watch the, the entire thing one? online. Yeah, it's not on, not YouTube, it's another website. Just search for Deer Season. You can probably search for Deer Season and, like, my name and Leon's name. Um, oh, what the hell is it called? It, it's not on YouTube. It's some other it's site. It's not Hulu or... Not Hulu. Hulu. It was, it's, a, it's a completely... Honestly, the site might not be up anymore. I don't know. It was it Russian? It was like, yeah, yeah. It was, like Russian Russian it was kind of, like, Russian yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, it should be online. It's very, very good. Leon is fantastic in it. Oh, Chris Stone. Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to get him. You know. oh, we've got to get him in the show. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was eight years ago. That wasn't the first time I've directed, but that was the first real kind of crew experience that I, you know, That was your directed. first? Well, with like a big, a big, big crew. crew in locations and stuff? Yeah, before that it was like the, you know, like my equivalent of the divorce American style experience, you know? Well, that's, a, wow, that was great. No, that was like, what, four people, that's, four yeah, crew members at most, yeah, yeah, yeah. you true. know? You did it really, really. I, you it was a like seasoned I, pro to me. Deer season, I think, was really, really good. Um, so, uh, so it, it, it was. what? It was. I was just. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's. I don't know if I can watch it anymore, but. Um, it's been a while. I could probably sit through it again. Yeah. Um, you should, do we have extra copies of those? Do you have any, Do you have extra copies of that? No, but that's I, another thing. Like um, don't tell like USC, but I can burn some. Yeah, we could. Do it. I, they don't care about it anymore. Really? Yeah, I think, cool. I think that's that's done. Um, so, um, so yeah. So maybe eight years ago, I would say I considered myself a real director, but that was just school, you know. Um, he was a real director. I was. It was. I mean, it was a pretty big shoot. We had what four or five, well, three locations, and one was like out. Yeah, it's a horror comedy. <laughs> horror um, comedy. It is. It was a horror. Movie. And he made me gay. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I, well, this, I, I, I made him make me gay. I have this I think terrible. That's how it turned out. I, but <laughs> I, ha I have a really, really bad gaydar. Let's just say. It's a to the point where accurate. at this point I just have. I just have to start assuming everyone is gay. It doesn't work in LA for me because all the guys are so well groomed and so self involved that they all if, seem gay. If they're actors, me. they're gay. <laughs> I had a friend who once said if they're in theater, they're at least bi. So yeah. yeah. So you know. Um, so when we had originally cast Leon, I had no idea because because you were also you were starring you were in Ryan's movie as a man who was married. 
Yeah, but he was such a, a little frisky was that, little... Was that, did it ever, like... Up, up, hooray, for Christ's Did it ever end up being part of the conversation that, like, in that, in Ryan's movie, that, like, that was part of, that you were, like, a gay man? I think I told... No, no I told her, I think I told her once when she brought out the beret, that's like, you know, it's really going to be hard for me to play straight wearing a beret. And we just kind of laughed, and I don't well, think it came up... regardless, me. due to my... But the, the character was... Naivete like, at the time, I did not realize it. Which is funny because then other people were like, you know, he's dude, you're made you hard a big fan. And then by the time that it ha by the time it came, or I mean, obviously, like I, you were already, you know, like we had already fallen in love with your performance oh. at that point. Mm. Um, and but and then at that point, it became weird to uh, to kind of not address it further. But you guys never brought it up with me. Yeah, we never. But it wasn't until I saw the film and like oh, they made me gay. Yeah. Because it, 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 it was, there was also like a bromance kind of thing in there. There was. You know? There was. We should have kissed when we said goodbye. <laughs> no, the way he made me gay was uh, the film starts with me driving in this dark country road and I hit a deer. So um, they laid in, um, as I'm driving, talking on the phone, this, what can you? It's like technic dance music. Yeah, you know? I don't know what you young people call it. I would just call it dance music, but it's yeah. really gay dance music. Yeah. And it's subtle. It's like, aha, that's how they, okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. There's no reason even Morton had to be straight. No, no, there's not no reason at all. And that's and the that's, fact that he was gay kind of made him even more kind of fish out of water, being yeah. surrounded by all those hicks. Who yeah, were, it added it added subtext to it. I loved making that movie. That was so much fun. It, it was a lot of fun. A lot of I mean, uh, um, Lynn was also in that. You know, like, mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, helped out in Old Dogs, and Ryan is still a very close friend of ours. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I am. Um, I directed a short film, which has yet to be done because I've been working on this one, on this I know, series. And I'm dying to see your. I'm yeah, I don't know. Sure. Like, uh, yeah, that was bad March of last year. Oh my god! Uh, it's been, it's it, been a year? next year. Next week, it will have been a year since I shot this thing, that Ryan produced, that Leon helped out at, and that Derek edited, and it's still not coming out Starts anytime soon. And what's the the tiny lister? Tiny lister. And it's still not coming. It's nowhere near done because I've been working on this. Well, it's, well, what you have done those looks. I can't wait for people to see it though, because yeah. people think of you. That that was why I was trying to kind of scoot away from having to direct all of the episodes because I needed mm -hmm. to go and you know mm -hmm. fulfill the commitment. See, that's that. funny. I just assumed that you were like you know trying to brand yourself more like the Comic Con sci-fi kind. Well, of Well, yeah, no. I, I mean that that is the kind of goal with that. You know. Do you think in the industry a guy could do both? I mean, if, we'll Abrams, if Abrams can do Star Wars and Star Trek, why can't you do sci-fi and gay comedy? Well, I, I think, I think there will always be a part of me that will do comedy. I hope so. You're really good at it. a sci-fi comedy. There you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, the short had comedic element. There's, there's, there will always be comedy. It will always be something. Actually, yeah, it did have a lot of comedy. It does. It will always comedy. be something slash vultures in the void. Yes, Julie, thank you. Um, so it'll always be something slash comedy, sci-fi slash comedy. Just this prove, is drama slash comedy. Just prove Bailing's horrible reputation right now. Bailing is fantastic. Oh, okay. <laughs> when we were casting Vultures, I don't know if you guys know who Bailing is. If but, you watch TMZ, you do. Um, but she is uh, an Asian actress with a very, very specific look and a very, very specific attitude. And the character that had been written was basically <laughs> was perfect. like her. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, when we were casting it, I, I got a casting director because I wanted name actors. Oh, that's why I didn't get a call. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which one of those people you would you have played? You can have a gay space, man. We haven't seen that yet. No, I, <laughs> couldn't, I, already no, I couldn't have done that. Um, not, not now. There's no part for me. And they, and the guy, you know, like the, the first question that the casting director that I hired was, you know, like, who is your dream roles for all of these characters? And I said, uh, there's a, for the character of Dead Speed that Bai Ling plays, I was like, um, ooh, it's really tough to explain, but, you know, like a Bai Ling type character, <laughs> like, and then we got Bai Ling. Um, and we, and uh, it was... It, it took a long time to lock her down because she's she's actually a very busy person. She works all she the works, time. She works her constantly. IMDb pages. She's all over the world, literally all over the world. She's huge in Asia. I guess. And um, and we weren't sure whether or not it would be something that she would be able to devote energy towards, justifiably. Mm -hmm. We were just a we were just a little 
thing on a one day shoot, you know. And um and not only did she come in and do fantastically when, you know, she came in on time, I mean, or you know, she came in early, got in her costume and she was very game about the costume and it's a very it's a oh God, her heels elaborate her costume, back. you know. Um Ooh. and uh and not only that, but uh, you know, like a week before, she called me. She she, she told me some lines and things. Yeah, she too. told me to she told me to call her, which I was very intimidated by. <laughs> like a hold on. Um, and we had a really in depth conversation. Yes, she was on rehab with Doctor Drew, um, oh. among others. So again, she has she has a reputation, which but she's we'll get to that. She's don't feel sorry for. Her. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, so. She yeah she like a, a week before she made me call her and we had a, a long conversation about the script in which she talked about her character and she you know stuff that somebody who really cared about the mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. uh, notes about that so uh, it, it was fantastic working with her. I was so nervous I, I thought oh god hold on a screen screen two okay there we go. oh god she's gonna be oh this is gonna be oh Arvin poor Arvin this is gonna be and she was so knew every line, yeah. had the performance down, was just She was exactly really how nice. we envisioned the character, which was It was weird. She kind of like, I was watching her, she kind of like changed how she acted with who she was with. Like, like mm -hmm. if she expected that you were expecting Bai Ling, she'd give you Bai Ling. Uh -huh. And yeah. she was really cool. I actually asked her, it's like, so what, how, she, how do you get this reputation of being this crazy You person? asked her that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's just, that's just that's well, and she said that's, and she was totally. she went nuts. No, she was totally cool. She said Fuck that. You, get that's out. like I'm keep, that's why it keeps, keeps me out there. That's I know. Keeps, and I love the fact that she's kind of aware of that. And yeah, she's can have fun, but she can she can work hard too. She was I was really impressed. Yeah. How did we get her on this show? We'll see. Yeah, I, I again, it I, wasn't the easiest thing to lock. Her I wouldn't want to exploit your connections any further let than me, I would. Have. How about let me finish my stupid that's movie true, first? That's true. That's true. Because I ran into her like a few months ago. Oh, really? And I had I I, I couldn't not say hi because we were literally face to face in a hallway. But I also couldn't say where the movie was. Don't anyway, we're getting though. we're getting sidetracked here. As, I, a, as an actor, though, if an actor asks you what's the status of the film, uh -huh. just be honest. I've had so many directors lie to me. Oh, it's almost done, and then a year goes by. Just tell the truth. They're used, you know. Actors are used to it. Yeah, I guess so. Um. I want, do you want do you want anything to drink or anything? Um, sure. I haven't had anything to eat yet, so I should probably stay away from alcoholic beverages. But oh, that's water. all I had. You have water? Uh, I'll have water. Yes. <laughs> you only have um, alcoholic. All right. Beverage. Um, let's let's uh take some questions. Okay. Let's let's build up a backlog of questions while I go get. While he fetches me. While I go get us some water. And, well, not water for me. So, no water for him. You can keep talking, Leon. It's your show. No. Oh. Yeah, beer, you and your fancy apple. And where's the? It's just I mean, sidecars. I would love, 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 love a sidecar right now. But I would be drunk in three seconds. What's in a sidecar again? Um, brandy, Quattro, and something else. I, I <laughs> the two things that you mentioned, I do not have. It's a very fancy Long Island iced tea. <laughs> Milk does. Where's Lynn tonight? They would like to know. Lynn's working. She's Lynn's working tonight. Um, Lynn is working on a reality show that is keeping her up most most nights. Are we allowed to talk about your your other stuff? Um, I've started getting into to, um, that certain show that's based on a documentary that you... Yeah, yeah, well, you can talk about that. It. It already, you can talk about stuff that's already come out. Catfish. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you, you guys seen that show, Catfish? It became a big deal, right? Because of the Manti Teo thing. Mm -hmm. That's that something was perfect timing. They could. Oh my god! I know. That better. Maybe we faked it. Maybe we set it up. <gasps> what if, season what if we did that? You know, <laughs> you'd never know, right? <laughs> that would be really good. It's a great concept, though, because I'm sure that shit happens all the time. Oh all yeah. All the time. That's the thing. Is that like. You know, reality TV is extremely flexible, but mm -hmm. that, you know, the stuff in that, sh it's an extreme, it's a very dramatic, mm -hmm. you know, show, but... And don't they have to do, like, lots of, like, homework and stuff before they even approach a... Yeah, country? I mean, you know, let's, uh, I am not Samoan, like Manti Teo is. <laughs> um, yeah, like, uh, 
you know, I think people understand that even with a show like that, with Catfish, that, mm -hmm. you know, they would, they, the producers of the show check, kind of, kind of check everything out ahead of time, mm -hmm. because they got to make sure that there's actually a show there before they right. spend thousands of dollars doing it. Not being hoodwinked, or it's not something that could explode into some kind of huge... Yeah, you know, you don't want to, like, if it ended up being, like, a 16-year-old kid, you, like, you know, underage people, like, you don't want to be messing around with that, you or know? Or overage, I mean, oof. Yeah. Um, but the set, the, the, the two people in the couple, you know, that have never met, like they really haven't, they've really never met, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So the producers know what's going on, but the actual story that you're seeing on screen is how it kind of really played mm -hmm. out. And I think that's what makes the show good, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it's become a huge hit. And he's so dreamy. <clears throat> what's his name? But... Guy really, that, that yeah. meme? Yeah, he's a little skinny, but he's cute. I had I, somebody. I, I had a cousin that said like they when they find out that I worked on. It's like, oh, I have a coworker that has a huge crush on me. Oh, I loved him in the movie. Oh. It's it just, just kind of relatable. I just I, I don't know. I'm, I am a sucker for like cow eyelashes and dark eyes. And... I would. I don't. Know. Yeah, you kind of like, <laughs> you, you kind of like the like he he's like a dark, he's a dark guy. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Opposites attract. I grew up in Indiana, surrounded by you know mm. toe heads. I, I I hate brown people. Give me brown people or <laughs> I, an accent. I hate brown, brown people. And a brown person with an accent. No, I'm, just... I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um. So uh, do you see like that must be interesting to work on reality because you like do a show like Catfish and you can see like this is actually it's like a documentary mm. and. Do you, have you worked on some reality shows where it's just like, oh, God, this is like so manipulative? I can't talk about that. We yes. have to name names. Let's, well, no, you shouldn't. You're right. You're right. You shouldn't. I forget. This it's probably Hollywood. safe enough for me to say that most of them are. Yeah. I would think most so. of them are extremely, are way more manipulated. But I think people understand that, you know. A good friend of mine, someone you know, which I'll tell you when we're done, mm -hmm. just had a really, really horrible reality. Lynn was going to go ask you about, so they were looking for like a Wonder Woman expert. I could do that. And they, they already, there was no, there was no pay. Uh, there was no, you were costume and everything. There, there, there was, it, it, you, it, it, don't worry about it. I don't know so much about her now since the new 52. No, 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 it wouldn't have been about that. Okay. Ooh, um, okay, so we have questions. How does working on nonfiction material compare to your scripted narrative? So uh, the main, the main difference is that um, most of my work, I'm a motion graphics designer. I do title sequences, special visual effects, um, and and most of the stuff that I do is for reality TV. So uh, it, it's not like my, you know, the work that I do is completely informed by the reality stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there is, they are they are very very different, but they're very similar in that they're still all about telling a story. Yeah, um, and of and you know like uh, eventually people start or people are kind of getting wary of that, mm -hmm. and I think we've gotten to the point where people are aware of it now that it's. You Do you know, think reality will ever go away? Do you think it'll be like no? I think, it, I think it's just going to merge at this. I mean, like TV is just going mm -hmm. to be. It's just, uh, uh, they call them docu soaps. Is just what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's. Um, I think the P, like, no matter how trashy, like, come on, like, all TV is trashy. All, t all TV is trashy, guys. Like, all TV dramas, like, it's all soaps. It's, stuff. it's I, all trashy. It is, yeah, I would agree with that to a point. I, uh, it's all manipulated. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it for a purely entertainment standpoint. But I think that's why people are, you know, into the reality thing, because there's something, it, it feels just a slight, more relatable mm, to people. I get that. You know, and people love gossip and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And again, gossip is half fake anyway, you know, and, and heightened and you all heard that about stuff. Gerard Butler and his thing with... Uh, was that Brandy Glenville, that one? Yeah. Yeah, you know. I love the fact that she thought she's so famous that he would automatically know who she was. <laughs> and no, straight men don't watch yeah. uh, Housewives. Um, all right, we'll, we'll move on. Did, did you always know directing was what you wanted to do? Um, no. Um, I didn't realize that until high school. Um, but 
I know I, I real like I'm, I'll, I'll tell the story. So I was as a kid, I was uh, a really good artist. Mm. Not great. I, I I had an aversion to taking art classes. So I really like, yeah. Why? I don't like being told. Like I just like draw. I, you know, just like I just like doodling. Gotcha. I'll I'll learn stuff. You know, like I, I like learning. Was it like a style stuff. thing? It's like I know what I'm doing. I just I just didn't like being told. You know, like I didn't like doing still life. Yes, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I wasn't mature enough to handle like life drawing kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to draw superheroes, and there's no art class that's going to teach you how to draw superheroes. Don't you think there should be? There, there is eventually. You know, like. Yeah. And I think oh, if you it, take the introductory course. If, that right. would be a really good art class in like elementary school or anything. Absolutely. You know, would, oh my all god. Kids, all kids would love that. You know, draw your create your own superhero. Mm -hmm. That would mm -hmm. be really good. Um, so um, um, I was always an artist, but I also I, I didn't realize it, but I was also I really liked telling stories. Um, I I was really into um, I, I wrote you know like. Uh, stories as a you know in, in elementary school and my stories ended up being way more elaborate than other kids mm -hmm. stories we would uh, i remember we had to do um it, it, i don't i don't know if you like do you remember those books like the magic school bus books you ever we are familiar with those mm. they were like mid 90s so you know. oh, no then i was um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. I was in yeah. So the, there were the magic school bus books, <laughs> and you know, I was in elementary school, and we all loved those books. And it's about it's about a class, and uh, they had they have a really weirdo teacher who, in the cartoon, was voiced by Lily Tomlin. Um, and uh, they would go. It was like magic school bus takes a trip into the circulatory system, and like the, the school bus cool. like shrinks and goes in there. Or, Goes back to the time of the dinosaurs, you know. Nice, cool. Or goes into the ocean and they learn about oceans and they learn about, you know, health systems. And so we, we had to do something course. like that about our class. You know, tell a story as, like the magic school bus, but it's about your own class. And every kid's story was like half a page long. And mine ended up being like eight pages <laughs> long. And this is like, you know, I was like 10 years old at the time, you know. That's why you and I get along so well. When in like sixth grade, you know, video was just... Video cameras. So, in mm -hmm. some English class, we like we're, we had to like program a day of TV, and every student had yeah. to do whatever. You know, sixth grade, we're like what twelve. Yeah. So most people did commercials or whatever. Yeah. I of course wrote and staged uh, airplane disaster movie. Whoa, that's cool. in a classroom. Oh my god, I would hate to even see it now. It, it didn't play. So uh, I didn't. I didn't have. Uh, we weren't. We weren't particularly rich, and I grew up in the Philippines, so we didn't have access to video cameras and all of that stuff. So I didn't know about that. And then in high school, our high school had an actual film program, um, and like shooting on film. Really? Not Shot video. on Super wow. 8. And it was film and animation. Super 8. And we did, cool. you know, paper, there were computer, uh, computer stuff came out like senior year of my high school, which was fantastic. Mm. That was awesome. But I, mm. I learned on the earlier stuff. As a visual artist, I use control freak with your DPs. I would be if I knew what I was doing as a DP, <laughs> which I don't. I'm getting better at it. I'm becoming much you, more aware of it. I think you know what you're doing as a... I know what I like, but I don't know if I could tell exactly what it was. You know, like how to, how to achieve... That's the thing that scares me from directing any episodes. I, I'm really intrigued by the idea, but the thought of like translating... But we, Kiko's uh, really good, and he, like, he has good instincts, but he's I also said, very flexible. I want them close, but I want it to seem really far away. He'd be able to translate that into oh, it, such and such lens. He may far. not be able to say immediately, like, yes, and then you'll see it, but mm -hmm. you, you can have a conversation with him at it. And I think that's, the, um, that's one of the things about being a director, is that you have to learn how to delegate, and mm -hmm. you have to learn to communicate, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and to be, and compromise and all of that mm, stuff. I'm getting there. Um. Because in handy producing ways too. So anyway, in, in, uh, high school I realized, uh, film and animation especially, because I, I really just started doing animations first, um, that I wanted to tell, I, I could tell stories with images and, and then that was it. I, I knew what I wanted to it's do. It's amazing. You're so computer savvy. I thought you, like, at the age of six, like, had a laptop. And was uh, no, I, I like computers, but, like, for playing games and stuff. And, like, you know, paint, you know, the, yeah. that stuff. But I, I didn't have access. We, I, we were just way too poor. I didn't have, any, I didn't have video games How did you kid. get from there to here? From where from to where? From Philippines to California to the U.S.C.? Uh, well, Philippines to New Jersey. 
Right. My dad ended. My dad became a like a, a grad student, um, and then like he came out here for a year and then I keep brought forgetting us. you're so young when I hear you say things like my dad was a grad student. It's yeah. like that's right. I'm um, not even thirty yet. Uh, Bruce asks, "Do you think shooting with two cameras saves time?" Yes. Editing, you said that you. Edit. Oh, not only like uh, shooting. Shooting. Uh, that's kind of a crapshoot because it's hard to light both angles well at the same time. Um, just as a preface. In season two, um, I went out of my way to shoot as many scenes as possible with more than one camera. Usually, uh, in season one, we shot everything with one camera and then switched to another angle and then replayed the scene again and then switched to, yeah. you know, clo and yeah. with four with with four main characters, you got to get, you know, that's a lot of angles. You got to get. So Muscles' Madison's angle, angle, Ross's angle, Brad, and then you got to get wider shots and all of that stuff. And you it just to, took, you left out Nathan. You have to get and Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, no. I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> need to shoot Nathan's angle. Um, and uh, and this and it was just it took a really really long time and it made it hard to edit, mm. especially uh, season two has a lot more of the kind of sitting in coffees, yeah. you know, coffee shop scenes sure, with re a lot of a lot of dialogue. The car scenes, I think, using the the car scenes, for the car scenes, yeah, the car scenes was so tough. just to be watching and like just have that fluidity of matching, yeah. you know, when you cut from shot to shot, it just really grounds it. Um, so this time around we went and shot two cameras, two sometimes three cameras, the, the car scenes yeah. we shot with three cameras. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's t it, it, there are challenges to making it look good when, you know, uh, DPs would prefer to be lighting everything for mm -hmm. one camera so that mm -hmm. it would look good. That's why soap operas don't look that great. You know, multi, like everything. because because everything is just lit. There's and no sitcoms, depth. Yeah. yeah, it's sitcoms and stuff. Um, but editing, oh my god, uh, there's <laughs> um, when you edit with multiple cameras, you can do it like you're editing TV, or it's not really like editing. Like a live feed. Yeah, like, like you were doing back live back TV back where back. you just say, and Never you can just do it with the keyboard. You play the whole thing out. Wow. You see three different videos. Wow. And it's playing all at the same time, and then you just like with with the keyboard, just one, two, three, three. To, you know, you can just do it in real time, and then you can tweak it after that. But the the uh, the car scene, the car scenes, which would have taken an entire oh my day God. We to edit been in that car, and it was a tiny car. I mean, it looks like we're also comfortable, but uh -huh. we were kind of. But even uh, even editing it, it would have would have taken one day, and it took me an hour. You know. Um, do you uh, within the industry whose work inspires you, or do you admire? Uh, no, there's me. There's. <laughs> That that's true. I mean, <laughs> oh, shut up. No, it's completely true. I I have a lot of admiration for writers, which Leon is and is a fantastic one because I uh, I I don't have as much of a taste for writing as I thought that I would, which is weird for somebody who considers himself kind. Of, I'm kind of a control freak, and also you know I, a storyteller. Is it the genre? Like, could you do you think it'd be easier for you to write like a comic book than a film script? No, really? it's just the it's you know. I like drawing piece of you know I like the a piece of paper in front of me. Mm -hmm. I like directing. I like pointing that way and <laughs> that way and telling people to you know do things. We have four minutes, so if you have any questions, oh, get them. Oh god, damn. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Start start throwing more questions up while we finish um, this thing up. So who who do you admire in the industry besides me? Um, <laughs> that's tough. Uh, I, I I've talked about like whose career I'd like to pattern myself. Mm -hmm. After, if mm -hmm. I had a shot, and you know, given who I am and what the stuff that I would do, and let me preface this by saying, uh, not his later stuff, but <laughs> Tim Burton's work. Mm -hmm. You know, he was an animator, mm -hmm. more That's introverted. Co like uh, I, th I don't think people give him enough credit for being a comedian. You know, for for doing comedies because a lot of his stuff people think are dark. Even Batman was kind of a comedy. Yeah, he. He he has very broad comedic sense, uh, yeah. a very broad comedic sense of humor that had just happens to have dark, mm -hmm. you know, kind of goth qualities to it. His films, even if they're not technically quote unquote good, they're still I could sit through any one of them. Uh, oh, I don't, uh, yeah, some of the old, some of the later stuff. Yeah, there are a couple just. The and honestly, I have this fear in me that says like, if I ever get that famous, would I lose? The, you know, would would I start you know, packing it up like if, that? If like there are no rules and you're so successful that you can indulge any whim that you have, maybe that's not a good thing. I know. I don't know. 
you know, it's a, that's a we'll tackle that when I'm a billionaire. Julie, you can't ask which guest star he enjoyed the most because then you'll piss off all the other guest stars. Um, I am drinking a Sapporo right now. It smells really good, and I'm not a big beer drinker. But... Um, who would you like to see in season three? Uh, <laughs> who? Okay, this is the. Let me rephrase that question. Who could I cast in season three? that would make it impossible for you to say no to director. I, I told you this before. If you get Harvey Firestein on the show, oh, I will absolutely God. direct the episode. Why? What is your... you've told me that. I, I think Firestein? You're... Yeah, what's your beef with Harvey Firestein? I don't have a beef with her. I just, I'm, I'm surprised that you would even know who he is. There's just something, like, it's... He... No, why not? Yeah, he, he, the voice. It's the voice. It's you know, like everybody yeah. knows the voice. Was it Independence Day? Is that was Independence Day yeah. is pretty big. He yeah. was also in The Simpsons. He played uh, Carl, Mr. Burns, that's true. That's true. or uh, that's Homer's true. assistant. That's a really good. That's yeah, a, you know, that's true. And I didn't I'd get. I didn't get the gay subtext. Of I would love to get like every out professional gay actor. Well, I guess <laughs> we'd have to run ten years. To uh, that yes, that I would really love for Bruce to reach out to him if we had uh, specific season three plans yet. But yes, I'll I make, would. Whatever he wants to play. I'll I guarantee try. you I will direct the episode that Harvey Firestein And when he do it in drag, he can play my mother. No. <laughs> um, well, no I, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, we're not. Charles Bush. I, I don't know who that is. He's... Um, Oh my God. People need to start stop assuming that I actually know people. He's not gay. He really is. Don't <laughs> I don't know who that is. So, uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Charles Bush is really famous for like drag. What was that? Did Kill Mommy Dead or something? He just like camp um, takeoffs on old movies. And, uh, drag stuff would be an interesting thing for me because I'm not. There's. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not as into that. I actually turned down a film when I lived in San Francisco that. Would have me be in drag. It was like you saw him out of, either out of drag and he put it on, or in drag and takes it off and had to sing a number. And I just said no because I thought it's drag. I'm not going to do drag. The film went to con. <laughs> That's your like. That's that, my that was life. your Don't ever got away. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I saw it in San Francisco and it was a hell of a part. I was. A Maureen McCormick's pretty good. I, I you know. Ooh. Peter, who's Peter Zaliga? Peter Zaliga. I don't know who that is. You don't. Someone. You've been stomped on shock. No, I don't know. Oh, I, Nathan's mom. Would you work with Karen Black? I have. I know somebody who's worked with Karen Black. Is she? I, they, they made a sci-fi film, like my sci-fi film. Really? Yeah. The uh, the people that worked on Archie's final project, they did one. They, they, Was it um, okay? I mean, did they enjoy working with her? Um, it. She I've turned heard. in a really, really good performance, but it's kind of you know. It, I think I think it was kind of tough. Yeah, I've heard. We can get Karen. We can get Karen. <laughs> or Joan Collins, but we'd have Joan doesn't take a shit for free. I don't think she would do our show. You saying Karen Black for your mom? Yeah. Yeah. That's she, cool. she kinda actually kinda looks like my mom. My mom's She's she's shown her boobs and stuff, right? My mom? No. How dare you ask? <laughs> Karen, on that Karen note, <laughs> are we still on? Can you guys still see us? Maybe it's not cutting us off automatically. It, it cuts us off after an hour. It we might have started late. Uh, oh that's true. Okay, um, um, I, we got to wrap it up. I, if somebody gets me a question in the next 10 seconds, we'll answer that, but we got to get going. Boobs. How could we work boobs into our show? You absolutely need to work boobs. We need to work okay, boobs. let me just say, yeah, if you get boobs to guest star on season three, I'll go do that. <laughs> What's my favorite food? Um, I like tonkatsu, which is... What the hell? Ja is uh, it's, Japan it's like the pork cutlets in Japanese food. Okay. I like yeah. pork and I like fried things and that's and I like Japanese Is food. Is that a Filipino thing? The fried I'm sure I'm sure they're I'm sure it's What's that purple shit? Thing. Ube. Ube. I have ice cream of it. I was just eating some of it. What we is should, it made we're gonna go try it. Purple we're, food? It's uh it's like yam. It's like taro. Oh, okay. taro? taro. No. no. I shouldn't have told him. We're gonna, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get going and I'm gonna go oh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go, go have him taste one of those. His wife's home, I better run. Alright. Girlfriend. <laughs>